So if you think of von Neumann computing as a left brain, symbolic, structured, if then else, binary sort of a computing, then synapse or neuromorphic computing, brain inspired computing is about pattern recognition, slow, synthetic, parallel. On one hand, you have flops, floating point operations per second. On our side, we have SOPs, synaptic operations per second. To give you a perspective of, you know, since the project started where we are, project actually started in 2004 with a single person, you know, leading from then on to uh, an Almaden Institute on Cognitive Computing, which actually, Christoph, you were present at, and um, so it's really great to have you. And then from then on, we worked on the largest blue gene L, the largest blue gene P, and largest blue gene Q to carry out increasingly larger simulations. This is, of course, Henry Markham's favorite one. And, and then we won the DARPA Synapse Project um, grant um, and worked very closely with Todd Hilton, uh, Gil Pratt, and uh, Dan Hammerstorm. We mapped out the wiring diagram uh, by collecting the largest data set. Uh, we created the worm scale chips with 256 neurons. I mentioned the simulation of the scale of human brain with uh, 100 trillion synapses to development of the True North ecosystem. So not only do we have a chip, but we have an end-to-end -end programming paradigm from user interface, deep learning, down to a programming language, firmware, as well as the whole user flow and debugging tools, right? And on top of that, we have created various boards and we are making plans by December of next year to create a 128 chip system uh, that should happen. So we are now just at the beginning of the next generation. In the next generation, we already can imagine new chips, new software ecosystem, new training, new systems, and even new sensors and new algorithms and applications, which will fundamentally allow us to create completely new neural networks. And we have a roadmap for building systems by using example of the scalability of True North. And the whole idea is a sort of a spiral. We went from architecture to simulation to chips to applications. And now that we have the benefit of insights, not just from our work, from work for colleagues as well, that we can actually again do another turn on the spiral. And the ultimate vision, which I believe will be possible before 2020 ends is that we will be able to produce a brain in a box, which was the original vision of Synapse Project, 10 billion neurons in two liter, one kilowatt. This is no longer science fiction, it is happening. So the project you know, has received a lot of um, adulation. I just wanna uh, flash it in front of you real quick. But this is very important. Last fall, we had a chance to present the tile board to President Obama, and we received a real signed letter congratulating the team, which has become a prized possession for our team. And it was presented uh, to the House um, panel on science, as well as Senate panel on science. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, the DARPA program managers for their vision, their partnership, I'd uh, like to thank you know, our current customers, um, Air Force Research Lab, DARPA, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, Army, and hopefully Navy coming soon. This is a collaborative work. I saw Professor Philip Wong, you know, who has been part of the project since very early on, Department of Energy, eight IBM labs and fabs, and just the Synapse project itself at six universities, but of course now we have expanded. I would like to thank uh, Livermore and NNSA for all the supercomputers that they gave us and all my uh, wonderful colleagues. It's a, really a joint work, um, and some of them at Almaden today. With that, uh, thank you very much for your attention, and thank you for inviting me, Murad. And, and, and please, please remember to see my colleague, uh, Dr. Paul Marola, today evening for the demos. John, so is the question we agreed upon, right? Pardon? The question we agreed upon, right? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, no, no, so some, some of us do, uh, do back propagation with spiking neural networks and, and some other things. But the, the question that I have is, 
Um, right now, your training is done offline. Yes. And, and I think it would be fantastic to implement all mm -hmm. that on a 28 board chip. Do you have any plans to put that learning algorithm into the chip and accelerate that portion of it? We certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's again, you know, it's just, uh, the accelerating learning has to be done with far more care than accelerating inference, as you can understand, because you don't want to tie yourself down so that you cannot explore the full space of learning algorithms. But I'm certainly happy to talk to you about this. So for your, for your brain in the box, one liter, you would definitely Two. Need, two liters, sorry. You would. <laughs> Carl Heinz, this is not fair. You would. I give you 10 liters. OK. OK, but you would still need a different solid state circuit technology. So what would be your choice? Seven nanometers. That would be sufficient to put a brain in a box Will be sufficient. 10 liters. I see. But you know, just, just to be very fair, you know, IBM has a huge investment in advanced uh, process technology, right? And we're continuing to do that. And as such technology becomes available that can be integrated with the existing process, we stand ready to take advantage of it. So you know, I, I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm not a scientist, and I want to make things work. So I'll accept anything that works. Thanks, Carl Heinz.